By the end of this video, you're going to completely understand and be able to use the properties of logarithms. And in about 30 seconds, here's how this video is going to get you there. We're going to start off by quickly going through the three properties that you need to know when talking about logarithms. And we're going to be doing examples of each of these in the next three problems. So here's an example with the power property. Here is one with the product property. And then here's one with the quotient property. And after we go through all that, I'm going to be giving you some harder examples. So one where we need to actually expand a log and then one where we need to condense an entire logarithmic expression. So we'll talk about how to deal with both of those and then I'll give you a problem to try and answer in the comments. And by that point, it should honestly be breezy. And if you're looking for the notes for this video, and you know, when I say that, I'm talking about printable notes. I made printable notes for this video, and if you want to snag a copy, I have that linked right in the description down below. Also in the description, I have an extra video where you and I will go through and solve eight more of these problems with log properties, and we'll also go through and evaluate 17 more logarithms. So especially if you have a quiz or a test coming up on this kind of stuff and you're looking to review, I have that extra video linked right in the description. So before we get into these problems, we have to talk about what the properties of log logarithms actually are. And so here's the three that you need to know. The first property has to do with powers. And what it says is that the thing that you're taking the log of, we call that the argument of the log, if it has a power on it, you can bring that out front and multiply it. Now the product and quotient properties, they pretty much go together. What the product property is saying is that if you have two things being multiplied inside the log, you can split this up into two separate logs. All you need to do is make sure that you add them together. And with the quotient property, you have two things being divided inside the log, and so you can split the logs up again, but this time you have to subtract them. And you'll see us do all of that in these problems. And the last thing I want to note before we get into these problems is that all of these properties work for natural logs as well. Okay, so now that we've talked about the properties, let's get into these problems. And we're going to start with the log of x to the sixth. Now for this log, you can see that the argument has a six in the power and the power property says that we can bring that power out front. So that's exactly what we're going to do. That six, we're going to write that out front. And now we just have X left. And so the log of X to the sixth is equal to six times log of X. And there you go. Our first problem is done. Now moving on to the second problem. Now you can see we have two things being multiplied inside the log. And so what the product property tells us is that we can expand this into two separate logs. We just have to add them. So let's do that. Log base two of 16 times eight expands into log base two of 16 plus, make sure to add them, not subtract them. That's for quotients, but it's plus log base two of eight. And actually we can figure out what both of these things are. Remember how we evaluate logs log base two of 16, we can set that equal to X. And then from there, we make the two bigger. And then this X comes over and becomes the exponent. And the 16 goes over to the other side. And so what this log is really asking is, well, two to what power is equal to 16? And well, spoiler alert, it's two to the fourth power. So X would be four. And that means that this log is four. So that is one way that you can think about it. There is a little bit of a quicker way that you can think about this too. You can just think about it immediately as two to what power gives me 16. That will be the value of this log. So if you want to think about it that way, that's perfectly fine as well. So we said that two to the power of four will give us 16. So this log is four. And then we have plus this log, which is saying two to the power of what gives me eight. And well, two cubed is eight, two to the power of three. So the second log is three. And what that means is that our answer for this log is four plus three, which is seven. Moving on to the third logarithm for this video. Here inside the logarithm, we have two things being divided. So we can use the quotient rule. It's like the product rule. Again, we break this up into two separate logs. Just now we have to make sure that we subtract them. So Let's break this up here. We have the log base three of 81 minus log base three of 27. That's how we break it up. And from here, you can see again, we can evaluate these logs. The first log is saying three to what power gives me 81? 
and you can think about that real quick. It's actually going to be 3 to the 4th power because that's 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. 3 times 3 is 9. 3 times 3 is 9. It's the same thing as 9 times 9, which is 81. So this is 4. And then we have minus log base 3 of 27. That's saying 3 to what power gives me 27? And well, that's 3 to the 3rd power. So we write a 3. And so this log is equal to 4 minus 3, which is 1. So now that we've went through examples of all the different properties, we can start to combine them. And we can do that in this example here with the natural log of 2xy cubed all over z to the fourth. And that is, that is a z. So for this natural log, the first thing that I see is that we have two things being divided. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to break this up into the natural log of 2xy cubed. And then it's division, so I'm going to subtract the next natural log which is z to the fourth. From here, I see a bunch of things being multiplied inside the first log. So I'm going to break that up into a bunch of separate logs. The natural log of two, it's multiplication, so I'm gonna be adding all these logs. So it'll be plus the natural log of x, plus the natural log of y cubed, and then I have minus the natural log of z to the fourth. Now, the only other thing that I see that I have to do is, well, I have two arguments that have powers on them, so I want to bring those powers out front. That's the power property. So let's do that. I get the natural log of 2 plus the natural log of x plus that 3 came out front, so it's going to be 3 times the natural log of y. Now I'm going to have minus that 4 comes out front, so I'll have 4 times the natural log of z. And that is my answer for problem four. Now for our last problem, instead of expanding a log, we're going to be condensing a whole expression with logs in it. And so what's the first thing that we should do to tackle this mess? Well, what I would do is focus on these brackets first, because before I deal with anything outside the brackets, like this two being multiplied out front, or this minus sign subtracting these two things, I'd like to simplify what's in the brackets as much as I can. So let's go through and start doing that. For our first bracket here, we have two logs that are being subtracted. And what that means is we can combine them all into one log where the arguments are being divided. So we have 2x divided by y. Remember that subtraction means we divide. Then we have minus and in our second set of brackets, I notice that in the second log, there's that two being multiplied out front. And what I can do is I can put that two into the argument, I just have to put it as the power. So this is the same thing as saying plus log of five, it's going to be squared because I have that two there. Okay, so now where do we go from here? Well, Let's start back over on our left hand side here and you'll notice that this log has a 2 being multiplied out front. And so what we can do is we can bring that 2 in and have it square our argument. So let's figure out what's 2x over y squared. Well, to square that we can just square each of these pieces individually. And that's something that's completely okay to do. We can distribute through the exponent because everything inside the parentheses is being multiplied or divided. We would not be able to do that if the things inside the parentheses were being added or subtracted. So like x plus y squared, we couldn't distribute through the exponent and write that as x squared plus y squared. And it again, it wouldn't work with subtraction either. It only works with multiplication and division and that's exactly what we have going on here. So this is okay. So we have a 2 squared, that's 4, and then we just have x squared over y squared. So that is what this argument is going to become once we deal with this 2. So we're going to write this log as the log of 4x squared over y squared. And then we have minus this set of brackets here, and you'll see that in those set of brackets we have two logs that are being added, which means that we can combine them into one log. We just have to multiply the arguments. 
Now, 5 squared, that's 25, so what we have here is 25 times 3, and that's 75. And now we have two logs left that are being subtracted, so there's only one more thing to do. We can combine them all into one log. We just need to divide the arguments. So we're dividing this by 75, so what ends up happening is the 75 just ends up in the denominator. So this is the log of 4x squared over 75y squared. And that is the answer for the last problem for this video. So that is how to deal with these log properties. And if you're feeling pretty good with this now, then here's a problem for you to try and answer in the comments. This problem asks you to condense this log expression right here. So give that problem a shot. Let me know what your answer is in the comments. And if you have any questions on anything we talked about in this video, again, let me know in the comments and I'll try to get back to you when I can. Now remember, I do have that extra video where you and I will go through and solve eight more of these problems with log properties, and we'll also go through and evaluate 17 more logarithms. And so if you're looking to get that practice in, especially if you have a quiz or a test coming up on this kind of stuff, then I highly recommend you check out that extra video right in the description. Lastly, make sure that you're subscribed to the YouTube channel. Look, we're getting closer to 100,000 subscribers by the day. But admittedly, I need your help to get to 100k because we're, we're still like 29,000 off right now. So we've got a ways to go. So definitely make sure you subscribe. And yeah, guys, that's going to do it for this video. And I'll see you soon.